Welcome into this Sunday's Sidekick segment brought to you by Paysetter Soccer Club. I'm here, of course, with Danny Fisher, Executive Director over, over at Paysetter, and Chris Black, and we've come up with a new title for you. Soccer Junkie. Yes. Soccer Junkie. I think he's okay with it. We're doing t-shirts, right? T-shirts. Yeah, <laughs> excellent. T-shirts <laughs> next Sunday for this. And we're going to start with those who aren't the most familiar with North, Northwest Ohio soccer. Um, historically, how does it rank up among the rest of the country? I think it's, you know, this year it was from the club side for, for ourselves, from the club side, we, we actually got our U17 girls into the National Championship Series, which, which was fantastic. And the next 12 months they'll be playing into the National League as well. So we're, we're catching up, you know, it's obviously a smaller area than your Texas and your California and places like that. But, but we're getting there and, and with the high school, there's been a lot of good high school soccer this fall as well. So we, we're getting there, we, we, we're up there with them, I think. All right, I want to specifically talk about the high school soccer around Northwest Ohio. Right now, there are eight teams ranked in the top. Let's bring you, let's, let's show you who they are. St. John's coming in at number six, Northview at number nine, then Division Three Ottawa Hills still kicking butt. They're at number one, Archibald number seven. But not only are the boys ranked, there's some girls in there too. Anthony Wayne at number six, and then you have Perrysburg also receiving votes. Liberty Benton number three in Division Three, and Eastwood also receiving votes. Just looking at this, eight teams ranked, what does that say about Northwest Ohio soccer? Well, I think it's been a good year. I mean, we lost a lot of talent. We did see this with the senior class. A lot of kids had moved on into college. We see them in the college ranks doing some phenomenal things already locally and, and, and away from the area. But the biggest thing is they've rebounded. Some teams have, have really jumped up. On, on, on the women's side, it took them a little bit longer. On the men's side, though, right away, St. John's established themselves way above everyone else at the D1 level. But now you see Northview catching up as well. So you see St. John's there. Northview could probably be there at the end. And then also Ottawa Hills. I mean, they are number one, and they can beat anyone on any given day, just like we saw yesterday. So um, we, I expect to see maybe St. John's and Ottawa Hills jump into a Fab 50 in the top 50 on top drawer soccer really maybe as early as next week. Yeah, let's go. Let's talk about St. John's Northview. They just played each other kind of this past Thursday. <laughs> it was a good attempt. It was a good attempt. They had to call the game at the 13-13 mark in the first half because of weather delays. They really did try to get the game, and they kept, they kept postponing it. But I know you both were watching or were there. What were your, your first thoughts on seeing those two teams compete? I think it was it was very cagey the first sort of you know thirty minutes as we said going into it and it was kind of end to end there wasn't exactly a lot of clear cut chances but two very good teams kind of sort of feeling each other out to, to see where they are and that will probably play a part in in the next you know when they play again in two weeks time you know because they'll have a little idea of who's playing where and and the kind of the tactics and the formation of everything as well so it, it'll be interesting to see in a couple of weeks but it, it it would have been a really good game under the lights at Northview so. It's a shame it got called. Yeah, it, it didn't seem like either team had that great a momentum going for them. So is it perhaps maybe a better thing that they get to reconvene, rethink about things, and, and go back into it two weeks later? Do you think that might be a, a positive for this, this game? Yeah, you know, on my side, my biggest thing that I think about is the fact that who will take the time as a coaching staff, watch the videotape of what they get, did get to play, and then come up with a plan to change. I've got some things rolling through my mind, I guess. Maybe I could be, come in for a consulting fee Let, or something like that. You throw it in there, yeah, maybe. But uh, I, I, I certainly liked how Alec West just saw in a number of games settle the game down, moving that ball around. Maybe Masters more time up top where he was so difficult um, earlier. St. John's wise, I think it's going to help them. They had a couple of injuries recently, and they can see how they can absorb those players. That strength, that midfield for St. John's, I, I, or, or for the Northview side, is really, really strong. Um, and and. It'll be fun to see what happens, but St. John's plays Ottawa Hills two days earlier. So how much time do you take? You, you, that D1, D3, you mm -hmm. really want to win that game no matter what because pride. But it's no shame losing, losing Ottawa Hills. I mean, that's, that's okay to me. Yeah. It is what it is. They're good. So that game will reconvene October 6th, 4 p.m. So in a couple weeks, they'll get a chance to go back at it. St. John's Northview. That's it for our first segment here with Danny and Chris.